we're going to be talking to uh, a guy who's been an AEW on their on their roster in the town. He's had matches on this show. Uh, Mike Magnum, the starving artist, a guy who we really have loved interacting with. Those of you out there who are in our circle have to be kind of in the Venn diagram, overlapping and interacting with Mike because he's such a positive, yeah. great guy, always encouraging everybody on, on social media. Um, genuinely, Mike, it's, it's really great to finally get, get the chance to talk to you um, because you're, an, you're, Jonas, you're an inspiring guy, man. We, we love your story. Thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm very honored to be here and I appreciate you guys uh, opening up a little bit of time for me, but I really appreciate that. And same goes to you guys, man. There's, you know, the wrestling world is uh, def- desperately in need of uh, good people and inspiring mm-hmm. people and uh, positive people. You know, I mean, it, there are so many of them, but you know, it's like one, you know, that saying one bad apple. Right. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, we try to just prevent that apple from coming in and just keep encouraging each other, man. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, as we we have seen it as of late, unfortunately, you know, Cody Rhodes and Jade kind of getting bullied off of Twitter and stuff. It's very unfortunate. It's more common than not that you see that clickbait of the negativity is is almost more appealing for people to get that negativity clickbait. And so, you know, to stay true to our goal since day one and being positive and uplifting the so others, true. uplifting the talent, even if it's not a, a match or so, if there's a botch th- move or something, don't focus on that. There's so much more within a match and within a storyline that you could focus on and draw out of it versus, oh, this person fell or they missed this spot. Like that's so easy to do. Yeah. But to reflect and to uplift, as I keep saying, on certain parts of that, um, it's way, it's more fun, it's more rewarding. And in the end, it, it makes the product and uh, fans look better, in my opinion. Sure. It's funny, too, because it's like, you know, I always would. I, I was guilty of it and still am. But, you know, a lot of times when that stuff happens, I mean, yeah, there's obvious botches and stuff. And we could laugh at them later on as long as right. they hurt. But yeah. it's, it's funny how many times that stuff happens and you beat yourself up and you realize, like, nobody knew Amen. you messed up besides your, yourself and your opponent. Sure. And sometimes not even your opponent if it's something so small. But it also, you know, you know even that's a thing that like happens this, in life, really right, right Mike? I mean, up and you're like, you're you're beating yourself up, then you go back and watch it, or you show it to a friend, and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know, so there's even that. I mean, even just you know, the guys getting you know getting bullied off of Twitter and this and that, yeah. but even just there's a lot, and I and maybe I'm speaking just for me, or even if there's one person that can relate, I I, I do it to myself. <laughs> I bully yep. myself, you know, and there was so so long where I did that to, you know to myself to a point where I, there was a time where I stopped wrestling for a while, you know? And yeah. like, so it's just so important to, you know, sometimes I'm putting those tweets out or those posts out for myself, you know, mm-hmm. just as much as everybody else. Right. So it's important to stay positive for just as much for your own mental health as it is for encouraging others around you. For sure. That's the, that, I mean, that right there, Mike, um, you're so authentic and to be vulnerable and to share that, like, Hey man, this, this, like this po- positivity thing, Sometimes it's it's I have to I have to speak that into the into the universe or I have to speak that into existence as a reminder for myself, because we can oftentimes allow those outside the outside voices, the noises, Mm -hmm. all that stuff that happens in our world to to get into our heads and we can then become our own worst enemy. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the things I love so much about your journey is because, you know, I'm a big guy and, and I've struggled with weight most of my life. And being real and raw with you, like seeing how you never gave up, seeing how you have transformed your body, seeing how you have given it your all, truly given it your all. And I know that's part of your starving artist gimmick is, man, I am, I am chasing a dream. This is something that I, I have a passion for and and I'm going to put everything, all the chips in on the table because we only got one life to live. Mm-hmm. And, and it really is a it's a really great story for more people to hear about. It's a great story for and, and here's a testimony of you looking at the we talk about it, it's a cliche, but looking at the value of your days and not mm-hmm. taking them for granted. Mm-hmm. That's and great. that's something yeah. that I, I'm really excited for you to have that opportunity to share that with your platform and, and tell us a little bit. And we're going to get into this right now, Mike. I mean, what was your journey like? getting to pro wrestling getting into AEW in particular i mean share a little bit about 
what your journey was like leading up to your debut in AEW and how you got that call to make to make that appearance. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate that. And I um yeah, I mean, I always say and I tell my kids and anybody that I ever, you know, asks, I mean, I, anybody who knows me well enough knows I can I can talk to a telephone pole. Like I, I mean, I love yeah. you know, just you know, bouncing off with people. But the most valuable thing you could give somebody is your time. You can earn money back, you can buy new stuff and you know, and I and I for me, you know, before, you know, getting married and having my, you know, my kids and everything else. Yeah. My I, I lived that at a young age and I uh I, I, my time, I gave it all to pro wrestling and, you know, like, like anybody else, like it was a lot of ups and downs. There was a lot of questions, a lot of regrets, uh, not, not so much regrets, but, uh, a lot of, you know, questions. Am I, am I going to regret this? Am I making mm. the right move? And there were times where I thought I regretted it and I shouldn't have done it, but, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, listen, I've done, I don't know how much time you guys have and I, I could well, ramble all the time, <laughs> man. I, I mean, I've, 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 Gosh, uh, you know, I, I've done extra work with WWE for seven years before even any of this stuff happened. And I've, I've performed at Madison Square Garden. I've performed wow. in the empty arenas wow. in front of Triple H and Vince McMahon and, you know, uh, all the agents. I mean, I could name drop, you know, uh, all day, but like everyone, all the things you dreamt about as a kid. And Amazing. You know, to the point where it was myself and I mean, you know, he was Biff Busick on the Indies, Oni Lorcan in WWE, but it was myself and him in 2015 in an empty arena in front of Hunter mm. before SmackDown at the Dunkin' Donuts Arena. We put on this match and we locked up and we did maybe two things and the refs like, all right, guys, take it home. Mm. And uh, I, I remember being like, what the heck, man? Like we, we had, you know, a few minutes. And it was only two spots maybe that we did. And we're like, did we mess? You know, in my head, I messed something up. You know, you could do be doing right. something and you're on autopilot. You're having all these other thoughts. And um, and I just remember panicking. And I remember Biff being like, hey, just keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't listen, keep going. And uh, I found out later on, you know, that they do stuff like that to see if, you're, if your body language or your facial, if you're going to panic, because that could happen wow. on live TV. And... They also, I found out, you know, later on, uh, D. Malenko was one of the agents watching, and he said that once they, you know, the guys saw us lock up, they first were concerned we were actually going to fight each other, like we had heat or something. And then they were like, when they, huh. they realized we were working, they were like, yo, that lockup looked like you guys were going to fight. We didn't need to see anything else. And three or four months later, we were all at the PC. It was myself, Gargano, wow. uh, Busick, uh, Ciampa, Matt Riddle, um chuck taylor it was all our trips to try it was oh. myself versus johnny gargano and johnny gargano left the ring and they signed him wow <laughs> and they sent me home for some reason but anyway <laughs> <laughs> if it didn't happen, i wouldn't be here so i can't complain i would have never met my wife i would have never had my kids i would have never you know this the aew stuff wouldn't have i mean who knows maybe it would have not at the, the timing it did and i'm a man of faith and i believe that god's timing is perfect and uh you know, it all happened the way it did and uh, for a reason. So, uh, man, I started like anybody else. I found a school and I, I started training and, uh, you know, I started just going out and trying to get myself booked and, um, you know, just started doing my thing and then realized, you know, one day it's not going to fall in my lap. Like a lot of us think when we first start and uh, I just started it's just, man, I, I, I did it all. You know, I hate, to, I don't mean to say it. I say I'm a man of faith and I'm going to say I did it all myself. I mean, God definitely led the way, but, yeah. I kind of just started networking and figuring out how to contact them. And mm-hmm. I harassed the heck out of this poor lady at, at WWE <laughs> that I got a name and an email address for. Sounds like us with the AEW media. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you got to do. You know, you it's working. Just be pleasantly yeah. persistent. And, yes. you know, you, I think she eventually was just like, listen, send me your stuff and tell look at our, our schedule. And when you're, we're close by, I'll make sure you get in. And the rest, and, and I, you know, I, I, Without sounding like I'm patting myself on the back. After that, I never. Once I got my first shot, I never had to send anybody a, a message again. They contacted wow. me whenever they were in the area. And 2015, that happened. And then after I got sent home, I, I kind of just took a break and uh, you know I, I kind of reevaluated. And that's what I was saying before, where I was like, did I make the wrong decision? You know, I I gave my whole life to this, and now the company I dreamt to work for. I've, it's crazy how you like. I remember being a kid. And sitting up at the top of Madison Square Garden at WrestleMania wow. 20 and being like, man, if I could just touch that ring one day, it would mean everything to me. Amazing. And then it was like, I got there and I did you that. You that perspective, like, don't you? 
What's that? You you sometimes can lose that like that right. that 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 emotion that man I achieved a dream right and you right. sometimes we can do that in life where when these events happen you almost like you lose that that man I I dreamt of getting to this yeah. very place I, I, that's a great perspective by you man yeah, I, I, I I love hearing just your thought process getting to that point. Thank you. And man, it was crazy too. Cause I, I, t- I was telling someone else recently, I, I, I would used to carry that ticket with me. Mm. And uh, hmm. when I, when I did the That's show nice. at the garden, I went up to the seat, I had kept the ticket oh, and I went up to wow. the seat and I sat in that seat and I just wow. soaked it in. And that is, uh, yeah. I remember That's the awesome. first raw I did, I did the same thing. I got in the ring. I was about to have my match in front of like Regal. It was like 2011 or 12. And I remember getting in the ring and just stopping and being like, Wow, you know, like every one of these seats, I probably sat in at one point or another, you know, and That's like so cool, it's Incredible. just you know, it, and, and like I said though, I you know, then I, then that happened, right? And I forgot how much I really like the little kid in me, which is the reason, besides my own and my wife, this is the reason I do it. I keep that little kid in me alive. I promised that kid I'd do this, and you know, despite you know having a to this day fractured vertebrae and and nine you know uh, herniated discs and. I mean, I could go on, you know, that too, but I mean, I, I, I'm not, I can't give up on that kid, man. I, I, when I did that match for, with AEW and I sat down with my wife and watched it, I remember just almost feeling like that little kid was next to me. And I was like, Hey man, we did it. You know, we did it. We made it. We got it. You know, that's so cool. And uh, <laughs> I just, that's the, the most important thing, but I did like, you know, just to answer your question, I, I know it's been a little run on, but to answer your question, I did all that, went back home, kind of soul searched, you know, literally came to jesus and said man what am i doing here you know did you know did i do the right thing i got mm. a little break like i said met my wife and kids and then when the time was right i was working for fedex man i was delivering wow. packages and i thought it was done and uh you know one day my you know i just said to my wife i'm like i, I can't shake that there's still something left like you know but i needed her support and to her credit she was like you have to go do it then you know we're still young you got to go after it and, uh, you know, we did it. I started a, a little uh, non-for-profit called Full Faith Wrestling. And um, through that, the itch just kind of came back. And, uh, you know, the rest was history. I just kept working. And eventually AEW, I had gotten a, a few other extra work things with WWE. I was, I was uh, extra in the, in the back of a few shots of that SmackDown when NXT invaded in Buffalo. Nice. Uh, right before the pandemic happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I was... Uh, yeah, I got connected with uh, Glacier, uh, Ray Lloyd, who's a, oh. one of my like best buddies. Like, I don't consider a lot of people friends in wrestling because you have to, you know, but mm-hmm. he's like a very good friend and a mentor and uh, got connected with him. And then uh, I had uh, got called to the Thunderdome to do a SmackDown and I carried Baron Corbin to the ring. And then uh, <laughs> that was when I kind of, and you know, no, listen, not to sound you know unappreciative, I mean, that all that stuff was a dream come true for a little kid from Long Island. You know what I mean? But, yep. um, you know, then the AEW stuff opened up and I was able to get the opportunity there. And, uh, and man, I just like, of course, this is what I, you know, like you, you couldn't have said it better. I mean, I, I don't think I could have said it better. The, the, the starving artist persona is literally me with the volume turned up and, and, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it really is, you know, and I'm, I'm the type of person in real life, like, Actions speak louder than words to me. I would rather, I tell my kids all the time, don't apologize to me. Just go change it. I don't want, apology is great, but they're words and they go away. Go yep. show me. And that's what I, I feel like I do with my life in wrestling and, and even in the gym and, and everything else. It's like, I could talk about it all day and I didn't get anywhere. So I need to just, like any artist, you ask them who they are. They're going to point you to their their greatest masterpiece, their finest yep. work of art. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to run on and talk like I'm doing right now. They're going to say, hey, look, this is <laughs> this is my greatest masterpiece. This is who I am. So for me, every time I step onto the canvas, that's who I am. That's where I perform. That's where my release comes out of, of all the crazy. I mean, I think any wrestler would tell you if they can't wrestle at least every couple of weeks, month, yeah. month or so, you get that they're going to go nuts. Yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. so much in there that you just want to get out. You watch a match and you're like, oh, you see a guy you want to work with and, you know, the juices go. So it's me. I mean, the starving artist is literally me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and Mike, it's great that you had such an, uh, an incredible, elaborate, good answer here because you're giving us some things to chew on and that we want to respond to. Bonds, it's, I saw you smiling when Mike brought <laughs> up his matches in front of Triple H. And that was one of the things I know we're an AEW-focused podcast. 
But that was one of the things that going into this conversation with Mike, you were most geeked about because, you know, yeah. as kids here in North America, WWE, what that was our big bread and butter for a long time growing up. Yeah. Um, and you wanted to talk to Mike a little bit about that experience. Yeah. So, so Mike, I know you're a big Triple H fan. We all kind of grew up during the Reign of Terror era, um, you know, bef- after he was terrorizing, but before he was the guy running the show, you know. Um, yeah. And man, like, just how did it, being a fan of him to go into wrestling after being a fan of a guy like that? You know, I don't know if he was your favorite growing up, but he was one of them. Somebody that I know influenced you. It's yeah. so like, how does a guy like that influence you when you get into the business? Like you, as a fan of triple H, you saw how dominant a wrestler could be. Did that change your perspective at all? Or did you just kind of have a goal with that? Or, or how did he influence you in that regard? Yeah. I, you know, for me, um, uh, you know, I mean, he for a while he ruined what I thought a wrestler should be because to me he was just right. I mean, in that That's time, he, chiseled right. yeah. out of stone, yep. had yep. the coolest entrance, was a yep. big dude, right? Like, so me, I'm like, That's he's the wrestler. coolest guy. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I do. There was I was talking to Adam Rose not long ago. I still keep in touch oh. with him. He he was like, man, I, and we were both uh, agreeing. Like, I, there were times I would go and watch his entrance from like WrestleMania uh, uh, 17 and 18. Yeah. I didn't have to watch the match. The matches were awesome, but I'm like, I could just watch that and be done. I was I know. fired up. Like, you know, uh-huh. it didn't matter. Yep. Um, he was my he was my guy. He was the guy I studied and and wanted to be just like when I was younger. And and uh, so I really gravitated yeah. towards him. But I made my and I know you guys like the story about Madison Square Garden. So I'll tell you another cool one. Just you know, we we relate on that little kid in us staying alive. Yeah. And I when I. I would go to the autograph signings all the time uh, at this mall by me. And I would always go and meet everybody. And I I promised myself from a young age, I was always a very deep kid. And I'm like, I'm never going to meet Triple H. He's my favorite. He's my hero. (laughs) And it wasn't because like, oh, don't meet your hero. You might be disappointed. But it was more of like, he was too big. I I said to myself, I think I was like literally 13, 14 years old. I'm like, I'm not going to meet him because I want to meet him as a peer. I want to meet him as Mm, a wrestler, wrestler. And and it was more motivation for me because I was the type of as a kid that was t- talked about what I wanted to do but never pulled the trigger. And I'm like, That's if cool. I say to myself, "You're never going to meet your hero unless you freaking do this," you know what I mean? Wow. So that was another motivator for me. And I never he was at a bookstore once by me in a few places. I never went. I you know like I could have gone. Never just kept that promise to myself. And the first time cool. I met him was. That first, I think it might have been the first or maybe second old school Raw that they did. It was in Buffalo, New York. And it was actually my first time doing extra work. That's And awesome. I just happened. I'll never wow. forget it. It was two things. The one time, the first time I met him was there. And, I met, and man, it, it was like, he walked by me. And I remember just, I wasn't starstruck by anybody. Because I, at that point, I had been doing it a while. And I kind of had been around a lot of legends and people. So, But then when he walked by, I remember just, it was like I shrunk. And... Uh, <laughs> I remember just being like, holy crap. Like it was the biggest thing. I'm sorry. But yeah, I, but I, uh, I remember just turning into a little kid and he was on his phone and he just happened to look up and he goes, just, I was looking at him. He goes, what's up, man? And keeps walking. And I was like, wow, holy cow. Wow. That's and then awesome. the second time I met him was doing extra work. Dang. I think it might've been in Albany. Maybe it was a raw and he was doing a segment with, uh, Seth Rollins at the time, uh, and he walked off. I was in the background pretending to have a conversation, and he like nudged me into the locker so he can keep going and <laughs> walk away. I sold it like he, you know, hit me with a pedigree. But uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and then when I had that match. I remember one of the spots I would always do is the you know shoot off. I would duck down, guy would kick me. I'd stand up, hit the ropes, and I'd do the spine buster. Yep. And I remember just naturally it was in that panic of them telling us to take it home with Biff that he hit the ropes and I just ducked down. I said, kick me. And he ducked down, he kicked me up and he hit, came at me and I just shoot, picked him up. Did the spine buster just came naturally. You study somebody enough. We were kind of in the moment. I hit him with the spine buster and I kind of got up and I looked and he's like, (laughs) just leaning on the ring. I swear to you, it was like, slow motion i like hit him and i got up and i was like oh my god i just did his spot right i just there. took yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and i yeah but i mean thankfully after that match that was the match that got me called down to the pc and then he was there at the pc because they were setting up for tough enough which was like i think the week after our our tryout okay so he was even there too watching us do the drills and do everything i ran past him a few times just like i man there was a time where it, if you told me as a kid I could be within 
six feet of him, I would be like, no way. And now here yeah. I am doing all this. And, and it was just, and man, it just, I, there was no really like one or two words to describe how I felt. Just that little kid, you know what I mean? That's that awesome. little You're back in Madison Square Garden. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's and awesome. Yep. The yeah, garden SPD, was, uh, I, I know that you, for you, man, you get a chance to talk to, to Mike about some of the guys maybe in the triple H is the guy that would yeah. make Mike in awe. But there are, there's a lot of star power on the AEW roster. And, Mike, we're going to talk to you now about the awards show for 2021. Yeah. Yeah. SPD, you get to talk to Mike about maybe the top guy who would, uh, yeah. would give you that moment, Mike. Yeah. Uh, SPD, I know. get yeah, into so it, brother. This is our second annual award show night that we're going to dive real deep in later on throughout the night. Um, but we want to get your take from kind of a performer and a fan's point of view you know, there, we have a bunch of different categories, but we know AEW's landscape has changed so much over this year, more than any any other year so far, and it's continuing to grow. And it's it must be so fun to be part of. Everyone we talk to just says AEW is is a family. It's it is one of those companies that as the tide rises, everyone rises. It yeah. seems that as as we have talked to people, and they are uplifting others. You know, everyone says you know it doesn't seem like a shoot. It seems genuine backstage you're like everyone's so welcoming and like they're glad to be here it's not like yep. a top dog you know trying to get to that spot and be there and you know secluding everyone else but that being said you know i want to know your top male and top female performer of 2021 you know think of the whole landscape of the year and and the storylines and the work they've both done in and out of the ring but who would you pick for your top male and female talent of 2021 in AEW? there really is so many I mean, I know. you said is spot on and it's, it's, I know, I, it's, it's so hard because you, you could go to so many different places, but from a personal, this is my thing. I, I got to go. My, my guy's got to be Miro for, I mean, he's just, a I great mean, pick. you know, he's a an absolute pick. animal. You yeah. know, you, you walk past him and you're like, that guy's a wrestler for sure. <laughs> and you know, and not, and that's not to say people that aren't, no, his we, or anything, right. you know. we get it. We yeah, get it. <laughs> um, he uh, I mean, he's the real deal. He's the total package. I mean, there's times where his promo plays and you're like, man, that's st- all those matches were amazing. Those guys crushed it. But like that promo stood out, you know, to me sometimes more than, True. you know, the action going on. I'm still yeah. sitting there thinking about that promo as entertained as I might be. I'm still thinking about, man, that promo. What did he say? Sometimes, like, what do he say? Especially like, as of wow, late. man, he's calling he out. Odds. Odds. Yeah, you got to be geeking out with that answer, dude. That's, <laughs> oh, yeah. Miro, Miro was, a, like, kind of a sleeper pick, Mike. Yeah. And well, you got some, like, Bonds is, like, just beaming ear to ear. Oh, yeah. He's been, that's he's been guy. pushing yeah. the Miro train for a long time. He, it's, he's that's a man. fantastic. Oh, yeah. Great guy. Great guy, too. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's top awesome female, too. Mike. Who's yeah, what about female? your top female pick? I'm a huge like, so I I love I love Nyla Rose. I and I, I'm a big um, Vicky Guerrero supporter fan. She's and, so uh, good. I don't think she would <laughs> mind me saying I she I consider her a friend. I mean, yeah. she's a, a wonderful human being. That's and awesome. on top of that, her her character, her performance, the way she <sighs> does things, it's like fantastic. I mean, she's a Guerrero, man. Yeah. She's amazing. She's, she's an icon awesome. in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I think Nyla's a beast. <laughs> Not no pun intended, but <laughs> having, having Vicky on, on, on her side. I mean, yeah. it, it's just, to me, I, she's unstoppable. I always refer to Nyla awesome as pair. the gatekeeper of the women's division, because if you can make, if you can beat Nyla, you've proven that you, 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 does, you belong, right? Yeah. Like she's, she's that level. She's the gatekeeper of that division. I've always said it. 100%. I totally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, the pairing with Vicky makes a lot of sense too. Yeah. She's killer on the mic. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to steal the ball from you here, SPD. I want to know for me, it's the breakout star of 2021, because we just got done talking about all the new names, all the new faces in the, in the company. Who, but I love that this company also seems to invest in their own talent. Yeah, they have the CM Punks and the Brian Danielsons, but they also are investing in their own people. Yeah. For you in 2021, what is the, maybe the team or this, the performer that really broke out to you and made, made waves? I mean, you can't not mention you know guys like Fuego. And uh, true guys like Big Shoddy Lee, who's you know incredibly talented and and yeah, uh, great, great, great guy. But I mean, my my guy's got to be. I'm kind of torn. Will Hobbs, I think, is you know all around phenomenal. And uh, I I mean, I love Hook, right? I mean, Hook, yeah, Hook Hook is, is 
I mean, man, I, I don't know. I get, I, I, I see his dad, but I see his dad with, you know, a little bit of a different twist. Like 2021, you know what I mean? Yeah. Vibe yeah. So, I mean, yeah. and he's another one who is putting in, I mean, tremendous work behind the scenes that people don't know about and genuinely, genuinely appreciates it. And no, I've had plenty of conversations with him. Like he knows what he has and he knows where he's at and he, mm-hmm has full respect for the for the business and that's great and and he's the real deal man i mean awesome. really yeah that's a, that's great this is what we like hearing the background the, like hearing that side of it is so cool um and i think that we should try to start pushing a campaign to get mike magnum as another uh member of team team tess uh oh, can, yeah. i like it, no, I like hey, it. Man, I, even listen, god creates assassins brother my matches on dark but like Taz Taz is a tough man to please, and every single match I've had, he's been very kind. And and he, you there know, you go. He's, he's, he's already saying, halfway there. I'm not saying, but I'm saying, yeah. uh, I, I, mean, I, listen, we, I ain't we gonna fight it. that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, Powerhouse Hobbs is a great choice too. Man, I still that got, guy is I still incredible. got a little bit of an issue with Ricky Starks, you know, I, I, from our match, you know. But I think uh, we could we could <laughs> set that aside over. for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. it's the holiday spirit. I think we could get you know, <laughs> new, year, you know. new year, fresh start. Right. Yeah, I like that. New year, fresh start. Yeah, for um, sure. I go, Mike. For me, like, I, I, one of the hardest categories that I struggled with it was match of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, because it felt it, it, it feels like SPD, he, he talked about it. We, our motto here is buckle up, uh, since yeah. summer because it feels like AEW is an overdrive. It feels like every single week, it almost that we get new candidates that come up for match of the year. Yeah. Um, we're fresh off the heels of a, of a 60 minute classic, um, Oof. that I know is tainting a lot of people's view of best match of the year. What is what stands out to you? Who is the winner to you? Yeah, that that one I was I I mean I because how do you, I, like, I would say it a lot of people I would see too like every AEW dynamite seems to be the best AEW dynamite like they just all are <laughs> that's true the know, meme and, is reality and, and uh, uh, yeah uh, Brian Brian Danielson said it too just I think it was today or not not long ago like the best part about it is everybody there is is hungry man mm. like they all want it you can feel it I've been in both locker rooms like you can feel the difference you know what wow. i mean there's a lot of differences but that's one of them that you can really it's almost tangible but for me um <clears throat> and i was fortunate enough to be in the crowd at, at jacksonville for, uh, at daly's place for a lot of the, the ones the great matches that went on but to, to, for me it was a three-way tie i hope that's okay yeah uh, of course that's fine uh, i think sammy and mjf was awesome i was yes, just, like, to agree. me you know you could break it down you could look at everything you did you could talk about it from a, a wrestling standpoint a fan standpoint but they to me, I just watched two young, hungry guys tearing it up, showing what they had, knowing their platform, appreciating their platform, and not wasting it. You know what I mean? Mm, um, uh, Jer- Jericho, to me, is like, I- I'm blown away by Chris Jericho. I mean, he's, uh, and we could talk about that too, like, you know, how it was with Triple H. Like Jericho, but I mean, yeah. the nicest guy, I mean, just, uh, came up to me and said, well, he follows us on full faith wrestling. He's a, a fellow man of faith awesome. and he follows awesome. it. I, you know, I introduced myself and told him I was the, the guy behind that. And, and I mean, man, anytime I saw him after that, Hey Mike, how you doing? Like just an amazing awesome. guy. And he doesn't age like Billy Gunn. Um, yeah. But Jericho, guys. Jericho and Kazarian, I loved. Yeah. Uh, I also loved uh, Kazarian and, and Christian. I, mm. I got to be in the crowd for that, which was so cool. Yeah. Uh, but b- besides those two, um, I, I loved Brian Danielson and, and Adam Page. I think that was that 60 minute match was, you know, I mean, that was part. It was Incredible. great. I mean, for it was our, as good as it gets, you know, you yeah. could go back, like you said, and, you know, like the Ric Flair going an hour all the time. But like in 2021 on TV, like, you know, and in and, and, and that arena and, and, you know, with all the crazy things going on, it's just for them to be able to do that just from a cardio standpoint yeah how could you not you know what i mean mm. it's just yeah those three for me were just the biggest you know standouts in my opinion yeah we were like oh, taking awesome. notes and like texting each other we're like wait it's another commercial break another commercial break and then i kept getting closer to 60 it's gonna minutes. go 60 we yeah. kind of get yeah. 
we couldn't yeah. believe it. But yeah. we had a funny story about Jericho. We were at uh, All Out all weekend in Chicago, and we just happened to be at the same hotel like we booked it. And we got in the elevator. Jericho gets in the elevator, too, after one of his concerts, so it was late. And Bowens gets in the elevator. I'm wearing our Dynamite Download shirt, and he goes, yeah. hey, Dynamite guys, or hey, Dynamite oh. Download. What's up? And then Jericho goes, who's Dynamite Download? And I'm like, Jericho, you've reposted us before. And he's like, oh. And then just gets out of the other. Jericho is, is insanely funny. Yeah, yeah. insanely yeah. funny. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, but my parents have had the opportunity to, to, to yeah. be in the suite with Jericho at Jacksonville, and they say the same things, just genuinely down to earth. For being one of the icons in the last, like, honestly, 30-year career, um, being one of the, the standout top guys and an icon that has been able to transform him, himself as the industry has changed. Uh, Jericho is fantastic, man. That's a great, great call. Bonds, yeah, sure. um, getting to you, Sorry. I mean, we heard, we heard Mike talk a little bit about um, Sammy versus MJF. And yeah. that was, those two guys were part of one of the biggest feuds of this entire year with the pinnacle and inner circle. I know that's the, that's a topic that you've been chomping at the bit to talk to Mike about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so Mike, yep. there is a lot of awesome feuds, and you got to see stuff like up close in Jacksonville for a lot of the year as well. What was your favorite feud of 2021? Because there's a lot to choose from that were awesome this year. Oh my gosh. Um, I know. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, like AEW is so deep, year, right? Oh my goodness. I know. Oh, 20. You got elite. You got the, the inner, inner circle pinnacle Everything. stuff. Yeah, you got so much. Oh my, the tag team division. Uh, yeah. man, oh, the stuff God. with the nightmare factory, the factory and the nightmare family. Like I love big that. QT we know fan. Mike, we know Mike's a fellow QT boy. I like that. Yeah, Mike. Which yeah, reminds yeah, me because your, your fan. story reminds me of him watching it his does. documentary. It does, you know, yeah. He's working at a, a tool shop and delivering tools. And you said you're working at FedEx. Like, yeah. That story, as soon as you told that story, I was like, that reminds me of that QT Marshall's uh, documentary and like yeah. just consistently pushing, having a supportive wife, supportive yep, yeah. family. True. Um, and then ultimately, you know, dreams come true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, and it's it's funny because I remember uh, talking to, to Glacier. He was saying we him and I when he, we started talking, he goes, Man, you remind me so much of QT. And well, you know, yeah. like, okay, we've been doing it, I've been doing it 15 years, 16 years next, you know, next next month. Right. Um and he was around the same time when stuff started happening. It's it's funny, but yeah, I love QT. I mean, that I was in the. I, I mean, I was there for when I was in the crowd when that happened. Uh, when he turned on them. Oof. That was so I, you know, man. Yeah, you know what? I think you know that was good. I mean, it was sh- it was short, like him and Cody's thing. It yeah, wasn't a long. Him and a go go Cody thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would have to say probably a tie between that and Sammy and MJF just for the, the you know the longevity of it. Love it. And yeah. it was great. I mean, they did a great not just because of that. They did an awesome job with it and um the long term storytelling it too. Was. Like MJF and Sean Spears you know, sitting in the crowd there in the yep. beginning and yeah, that's that's really long term. And that and that feels like a few that's gonna last for a long time. Like yeah. these guys are gonna be going head to head for great point a decade. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um but also Mike there's a lot of awesome tag teams and we talk about this a lot, you know, AW the is the tag team center of the world. Um, and there are so many good ones to choose from. You could name the top 10 tag teams in AW. And I think for the best tag teams in the world. Yeah. So who True. is your tag team of the year? Because True. that's a really tough one. Well, uh, really I mean, tough. I love FTR. I always thought I always loved. Yeah. Them. I knew I liked Mike. Man, I mean, you know, they're, I, I remember sitting and I, man, when I was younger, I mean, I still am, but when I was younger, like I was the guy that would, that would have to apologize before I went out because I was very snug and very mm. stiff. And I liked hard hitting. Cause I mean, you know, it's, to, it's not fake. You know what I mean? Right. And we're, what we're doing is legit. And if yep. you could get somebody to come and suspend their disbelief, you go to a movie, right. And you watch a movie. And if the actors are good enough, even though, you know, it's not real, if the actors are good enough for that hour yeah. and a half, two hours, you can be sucked in and, and believe it and get True. emotionally attached. The difference is they have a bunch of takes and they can tr- keep, you know, try over, start and over. They have and, stuntmen. Yeah, and they have all that stuff. <laughs> not not to, to devalue what they do, but I mean, oh, yeah. you know, right. with wrestling, you got one shot, one take, it's live, and they're mm-hmm. there. 100 percent in disbelieving they don't they don't believe that any thing you're doing is real they're la- they're there to laugh or have a good time or whatever and if you yep. can get them to go oh my gosh you know that's that's what that's that's what this is all that's the art of it right yep, that yep. or using your character and your you know 
letting people invest in you, giving them a chance to love you or hate you. Um, and I think FTR does an amazing job of that That's as well as I, I remember being in the crowd for some of their matches and, you know, whether it was a dark with two local guys or, or sign guys and being like, man, I'm glad I'm not them. I'd love to work with them. <laughs> dang, they're hitting hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and the Dax thinks a lot of Dax team. was talking about it on Twitter today. Like, you know, yeah. being at the gym and just being like having people come up to him. Oh, that wrestling's not real. Right. Meanwhile, oh, his oh, arm is taped and he's, he's yeah. working through at the gym. I mean, Dax and F and cash, you're right. They have that old school ability just to get you emotionally invested in everything they do. And how many times that's happened to me. It's, it shocks me to this day. People all ages, you know, like, oh, yeah, I used to watch it with my, my you know, my dad or my grandpa. That stuff's not really a phone. You do that phony stuff. And I'm like, I just, huh. like he said, you know, I saw that post. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's not real. Yeah. Yep. No, so, you know, yep. like, I just, I, there was a point where I would get so fired up and then I'm like, it ain't worth it, man. Yeah, no, it's not real. It's all yeah. fake, No problem. Yep. But just a bunch of actors thing. jumping around. Yeah. Right. Them, them and the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks, I, you know, you asked me like five years ago, and I would I was on that bandwagon of like, oh, my gosh, you know, like they can't, they don't know how to work. They can't tell stories. They blah. But then as I, as I got to like, I, I started watching them more and I started like, you know, seeing them live, especially and being like, oh, my gosh, what these guys are doing is and not, not to keep Incredible. saying they, they, what these guys are doing is art. It's, yep. I mean, they, and they're going and they're working their butts off and they're doing things that I, I don't even think I could do on like a, make a video game character, <laughs> you know, and I, it, yeah. it blow, they blow me away. So I yeah. mean, it would have to be a tie. I know they're two completely different, you know, sets of the spectrum, but they're, they both really are. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's an awesome answer by you because it couldn't, they, those two couldn't be any more different old school and new school. Love yeah. that answer, yeah. man. Thank yeah. You. yeah, Mike, man, this has been a lot of fun. We could talk to you all night, but the way we wind things down, I like to do a fast five yeah. questions, kind of like your your fast answers. Um, but we really appreciate the time you're taking with us. We, we uh, so easy to talk to you. Um, we, I mean, crayfish is gushing over there. Bonds has got a lot of stuff over there, like a lot of similarities. Much you know, being well man. with with uh, dynamite download. And it's funny, one of our uh, fans in the chat, because at All Out we had one of our friends come, who's not a wrestling fan. Uh, before but now he is he had yeah. um, a lucha yeah. mask on and we're like was mike the the dynamite guy was it him <laughs> he's a big guy too <laughs> because he's wearing our dynamite download shirt we'd love to hang out mask. with mike the guy is yeah, the real deal sure. man oh, thanks but, guys Same no problem you. man but as uh you're just talking about the young bucks and moves first fast five question is what move do you wish you could do that you can't do or have have tried and it's just like it's risk versus reward things like that like what finisher or move in general you wish you could do the lockup no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um, I what is really mjf say you could no, beat I'm someone with a side I, headlock yeah, yeah. gosh you know i've always wanted to be able to do a moonsault i, you okay. know, I, I can do you know I, I haven't had the opportunity yet on this stage hopefully uh, you know i will but I, I haven't had the opportunity really i could do you know like some some mean stuff off the ropes but i just haven't had the chance right um but i i just never i never even tried to do it yeah, yeah. You know, i've always it's wanted scary to. I man just, i get i get scared once i start to you know make that turn i immediately twist i just get nervous so i, I you know yeah yeah i, I man i've tried on a trampoline but i've never, <laughs> never had a risk versus reward and you know as we saw with uh one of our favorites here lance archer you know um what happened so with true, the match with eddie kingston like he's done that probably a thousand times yeah. um and then it's another big man too so yeah um but yeah we we always talk like pox moveset is insane the stuff that he can do um absolutely incredible yeah but yeah um next question so um what band would you pick to perform your uh, entrance music if you could pick any band uh downstate i love nice. them and uh i actually i know uh justin uh, him and i have talked a little bit and he actually yeah. did put together an instrumental for me oh nice uh so that's a little sneak peek I haven't told anybody nice. yet. all right yeah i would love to have them you know I'm, I'm hoping that they're able to complete it they have the instrumentals yeah. down but uh if they come through that'll be a, a nice uh gift for the new year that's awesome, awesome. Yeah. nice new, new year Records reset, new yep. music. All right. Team yep. Taz, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You got to put it, put it all music. together here, yeah. Mike. I like it. You never know. You always have to put it out there. Um, what is a hidden talent or maybe kind of like a hobby many people don't know about you or wouldn't expect you to have or you to like? 
uh, not on any sort of big stage or scale, but I, I love doing magic. Before I got okay. into wrestling, um, and maybe nice. just because of the smoke and mirrors, you know, right. it's the same kind of deal. That suspension of disbelief, but yeah, I love magic. Was my first thing. I love doing magic. Yeah, nice. You don't hear I that every really day. That's cool. sweet. Yeah, a really good friend of our mine is a very good sleight of hand magician. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but his name's Bill Malone. If you haven't heard of Bill Malone, look him up. He's yeah insane. I'll send you a link in your DMs of one of his famous tricks. It's yeah. incredible. He uses the yeah, whole deck card. Yeah, awesome guy that. too. Yeah. What is your dream opponent in AEW? Oof. Um, Gosh, nice question. It could be a tag team too, and you could have a tag team partner of your choice if you want to do a tag match or a singles match. I, for a long time, I was clamoring for Mike to go head to head with Lance Archer. I thought that would be sick, but I, <laughs> no, I'm no. like, I want to hear it. Go, no. who, who would be no, your number no, no, one? No. <laughs> he wants want, no piece of it. A bit of, I like having a little more time with Lance. It wouldn't be very long. Um, uh, man, that's hard. I mean, Jericho is an obvious one. Um, yeah, Miro. Uh, I've worked with Frankie Kazarian, but I would love to work with him on that stage. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I could go, I could name everybody. Uh, Cody, <laughs> right. uh, you yeah. know, um, yeah, the but I think I, it would have to be right split between Jericho and, and Miro for sure. Great, Great. choice. Yeah. For sure. That's awesome. Very different. Uh, last too, last question for the yeah. fast five. And then we want to hear where everyone can follow you and find out more about you and any upcoming shows or anything like that. Um, the age-old question, is a hot dog a sandwich? Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, it is meat in between bread, right? right. Um, <laughs> is I've it its own category? Is it a sandwich? I'm on I, sandwich I don't know. Street. I've never considered it a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to get heat. We've, had, we've gotten along this whole time. <laughs> I think it's a guy, Mike. I want to hear you. I want you to marinate on that question, pontificate on that one. That's deep. That's a deep one. <laughs> we can have some real heavy conversations about hey, we this. We can man. talk about this for like six hours. Yeah, no, I can talk to you guys the rest of the night. Well, that's great debate. But yeah, I, could... <laughs> I love yeah. it. Oh man. All right, Mike. So yeah, I mean everybody knows you're you're not only funny guy, insightful um down to earth deep dude with a great story um and somebody who is always trying to lift other people up um don't really change. thank you so much for sharing your faith your journey yes. um and and your outlook um on life in general sharing some really cool stories with us too man really appreciate it where can people go follow you so they can get a little bit more taste of mike magnum big taste yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um Oh man, everything's Artist Magnum. Twitter and Instagram is Artist Magnum. Um, I got pro wrestling tees, uh, dot com slash S A Mike Magnum. Um, yeah, that that's my main stuff right now. Uh, we don't got. I, I, I'm taking a break this month into, into like the beginning of January. I have nothing coming up. Uh, you know, I spend this time just with my kids, my family. And, Great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know AEW's you know going to be close by again in February, so. Keep your eyes peeled. I don't know. We'll see. Um, yeah. But yeah, they really just Instagram, Twitter, Artist Magnum, and uh, the Pro Wrestling Tees slash SA Mike Magnum is, is my main stuff. And guys, thank you so much for the kind words. And I I, I encourage you guys to keep doing the same thing. And uh, man, anytime I could hop on here with you guys, I'd love to talk some wrestling with you guys. You That'd guys be great. Awesome. Joining us, Mike. Uh, the, We'd I love to that, have you on. Yeah. I hope that we get a little bit more uh, opportunity to do this with you, Mike. This was a lot of fun, man. Thank and we're going to so put much. this together and repost it and get a sh uh, some clips of it and, you know, help push push Mike Magna, man. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. And make sure just tag me in anything and everything. Of course. Okay. You're the okay. real sure. deal, man. You're the real you. deal. But, uh, I mean that. You're the real deal, brother. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Hope to talk to you again soon. Likewise, guys. Have a great new year. Thanks, you too, brother. brother. Thank Thanks. you.